Juan Pablo Montoya is a racing legend. His two Indy 500 wins and his success in F1 are amazing stories, but his stock car career is seldom remembered. If you do remember his stock car career, it's probably because of this. They're trying to clear debris off the racetrack and the car brakes, won't steer, and he slides up the track and into the back of that surplus helicopter jet engine on a trailer used to dry the racetrack. What you certainly have forgotten is Juan Pablo Montoya's stock car debut roughly five and a half years earlier. Today, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. This is the story of Juan Pablo Montoya's beginnings in stock car racing. A lot of you probably know about Juan Pablo Montoya's career, so I'm going to keep this introductory section brief. Juan Montoya had moved to F1 after winning the Indy 500 in 2000. He raced for Williams after that, but after a disappointing 2004 season, he left Williams and joined McLaren. However, this relationship broke down over the next year and a half, which eventually led to him leaving the team midway through 2006. After leaving F1, Juan was ready to forge a new career, this time in NASCAR. This would, of course, be with his old car owner from IndyCar, Chip Ganassi, but he needed experience in a stock car before his full time cup season in 2007. So for the Talladega Arca race on October 6, 2006, Juan Pablo Montoya would appear on the entry list. Driving the number 4 Texaco Havilland Dodge, qualifying was fantastic as Juan qualified second alongside Bobby Gerhardt. Getting into the actual race, Juan Pablo got off to a great start, taking the lead from lap 1. He was still leading when on lap 3, Ryan Howard grind to a halt on the back stretch after his camshaft broke. When the race was restarted a few laps later, Montoya still held the lead and would continue to hold the lead until Bobby Gerhardt overtook him in the tri-oval on lap 10. He then slides second in line on the bottom and was stuck in the pack where he'd stay for most of the day. Another caution came out on lap 21 for a slow Timothy Peters who had blown a left rear tire. By this caution, Juan had fallen down to fifth and would pit during the yellow. This pit stop would go about as smooth as acupuncture treatment from Michael J. Fox. Not only was the pit stop 25 seconds, but he also had an uncontrolled tire. An un controlled tire that wasn't mentioned by the speed crew until they returned from commercial break. The top link in the description takes you to the race broadcast and I want you to do this. At 33.05 you can hear someone near the box scream about the tire that was halfway across the pit lane. And at 37.34, Bob Dillner on pit road finally acknowledges the uncontrolled tire. On top of that, the reason he said the uncontrolled tire happened was because there are too many people near the pit box. Now, I've heard about averting blame before, but I've seen YouTuber apology videos that are better than this. Anyways, he wasn't penalized for this because if we're being completely honest, Arca has bigger issues than uncontrolled tires. Juan was still relegated pretty far back in the field, but on the bright side, at least he was on a different strategy and on new tires. He was slowly but surely making his way up the field, but then things went from bad to worse as he was involved in the lap 35 crash at turn 3. He wasn't out, but his right side door was slightly caved in. Fortunately for Juan, his dodge was still fast as hell, so over the next 30-ish laps, he crawled back to the front. With 15 laps to go, Juan was still in third when chaos ensued behind him. Nine cars were involved, but there's a bigger problem than just the wreck. With the sun coming down, ARCA officials called the race on lap 81, giving Frank Kimmel the win and giving Montoya a third place finish in his stock car debut. A mighty impressive performance at an unfriendly track for both rookies and veterans respectively. 